I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Board of Leavenworth County Commissioners and I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I can't not say that. I'd like to begin with a moment of silence. Call start with Commissioner Stevens. Here. And Commissioner Shimke is absent but can be available by phone if needed. And Commissioner Smith is present. Commissioner Cause. Present. And Commissioner Culverson. Here. All right. I'd like to open up the public comment portion of our meeting. Anyone from the public wishing to speak, please come forward and state your name. Uh, might remind uh, any of the special use permits. We will allow public comment when we do our uh, public hearing on that. So, seeing none, we'll close public comment and we'll move on to administrative business. The clerk had one item for administrative business this morning. Um, I do. We had a letter of resignation from the Delaware Township trustee, and um, I did advertise to fill that position. Um, we did have one applicant that came in that does reside in Delaware Township, uh, Travis Hunsecker, um, who even happens to be employed here at Leavenworth County. So um, I have given that letter to Commissioner Cause to review. And I think each of the commissioners have that letter. Right. So I would just need a motion for the appointment um, to the Delaware Township trustee position. Yeah, before I do that, I just want to make I just want to make one thing uh, announcement is that uh, Tom Dials, who is the treasurer for the trustees, had emailed uh, Commissioner Shimke myself um, expressing an interest in that appointment. However, I think that you know he's serving as well as the treasurer for the township, and that uh, both positions will come up for election in 2020. So that being said, I move that uh, Board of County Commissioners appoint Travis Hunsecker as a trustee for the Delaware Township. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the appointment? Voting? Aye. 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 That was the only administrative business. Okay. Then we'll move on to the consent agenda. The commissioners had a chance to look at everything on the consent agenda. Is there any questions or concerns? Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Motion to approve consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. And now. I'll need a motion uh, for the current board to adjourn and to move into sign nine. Motion to adjourn. Seeing okay. To adjourn into sign nine. Yep. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Okay. Now the board must appoint a temporary chairman. I say Chad's not here, so we make him turn. Second. <laughs> As a temporary chairman, it might be a little tough. To That'd be difficult. Is he available it? by phone yet? No. Call him up. All right. Appoint a temporary. Well, it's a temporary chair. I appoint, uh, I nominate Commissioner Cause to uh, serve as the uh, temporary chairperson. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Aye. Okay. 
I need a motion for the board to reconvene. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second for the board to return to regular session. Is there any discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, I need a motion for now formal action. I'm going to need a motion to appoint a new chairperson. I move that we appoint Doug Smith to be the chairperson. You interested? I thought we were on a rotation here. Uh, the only thing I had to say about it was I was going to appoint or move to appoint either Doug or one of the other three because uh, if you guys wanted that opportunity, it might not be here, you know, next year for you. So oh, I shouldn't even be doing this now. I should have had the new chairperson do it. Pardon me. Uh, <laughs> the temporary. I'm sorry. I'm already. Okay. <laughs> was the same. Uh, I'm sorry. Here. Is there? Oh, is there a second? Second. Are you interested in continuing as the chair? I will do it. If that's what everybody wants. But I think I mean I do agree that rotating, but he has experience right now and as we move ahead, you know. So we get on our regular cycle? Yeah. Okay. That's you guys' choice. I, mean, I think to keep I the, the flow, the flow the of the meetings. Would make a fine chairperson. Yeah, I think to keep the flow of the meetings efficient, that's a good idea. Okay. We got some Motion. controversy meetings coming up that <laughs> you never people know. don't want to share. I can think of a couple. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Voting starting with Commissioner Steven. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, that didn't work. There's a new chair. <laughs> Wasn't that easy, was it? Thought he's gonna get out of it. Well, just for the record, I support Commissioner Cause as being the chairman. But well, thank you. So you. can we have a uh, vice chair person <laughs> when I'm protein. gone, Commissioner? Chairman Protein. It's you. All right. Well, I appreciate the support. But Anyways, all right, now let's consider a motion for regular meeting days. Does commissioners feel like Wednesday's working good for everything? If, if I could, uh, since Commissioner Shimke can't be here, he did share with me that he would prefer to keep the meetings on the same dates and times as we currently do. Just okay, I think it out. works better in the middle of the week myself. I, works very I good. concur. Works fine for me. Same gives time. You, gives you a couple days to catch up on all the weekend stuff that people seem to do. And, 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 and department heads too. <laughs> department heads have stuff that come up and they need to get. I like Wednesday, so. And I just wanted to mention that a few people asked to move it to the evening, and I told them we've already tried that. We and tried it. Nobody showed up. So. And but that doesn't mean on occasion that we can't move the meeting to. A, a we tried meeting. once a month even. Yeah, I'm not meeting. saying if there was a special. Oh yeah, yeah. City We're meeting. open right, to the meeting. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. But no, it was something I wanted to do when I was running to have evening meetings. But I think by having our meetings live has kind of uh, handled that situation where people can stay informed. Mm -hmm. And they can uh, watch it in the evening. Right. At day. their own time, don't mm -hmm. have to be here. Yeah. So, so they, but, but we did try the meetings in the evening, one a month, and it, it just didn't have a large turnout. I'm sure we so, have more viewers than we have people attending night meetings. With that being said, I'll entertain a motion to um, set the regular meeting days. I make a motion we keep the regular meeting days Wednesdays at 9 o'clock. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion on the meeting days? Voting. Aye. 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 All right. Now I need to <coughs> consider a motion uh, for the official newspaper for Leavenworth County. I move that we make the Lemore Times the official newspaper for Lemore County. Second. All right, got a motion, second. Any further discussion? Uh, John, is a Lemore Times is it available for purchase in Tongan Oxy on a newsstand? I have to ask. I don't know. It is in Basin. In Basin. I don't think it's Tongan Oxy. Okay. It's in uh, Casey's. 
At Tom in, Knox? Uh -huh. In Tongi? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Not, not, not the last not. time I looked. Yeah. Not? In, in Baser it is, but I don't believe in Tonganoxie. I could have sworn. We, we can check on it. Probably because Tongi has their own paper. Oh, we have the mirror. yeah, they have the mirror. Yeah, that's true. The Lawrence Journal. I thought the Lawrence Journal was there, too. Yeah. Yeah, the Lawrence Journal and Tongi are same thing. Yeah, same company. Huh. Okay. okay. But, but in Baser they offer the mirror. A lot more times, yes. And the mirror. So. We'll look into that. Okay. All right, I have a motion to second. No further discussion. Voting on the official newspaper, Lovemore County. I'm sorry, Commissioner Culberson. Aye. 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 All right, now we need to consider a motion to approve uh, uh, Commerce Bank as the official depository for Lovemore County. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Now we need to move, uh, consider a motion for the, uh, set the wages for elected officials as approved in the budget. So moved. That would be a resolution. Oh, that's uh, a resolution. Just for clarification, it would be resolution number... 21. 2020-1. Motion to approve resolution 2020-1. Just a minute. You already have one on other items in the agenda. So that'd be uh, right. I didn't know about this resolution. But you can, we can do it out of order, with so we don't have to renumber all the other resolutions. So, so would we, it be so five, four, so we can yeah. do this one as five, five? Okay, five. Twenty twenty dash five. Name my second motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the wages for elected officials? Voting. Aye. 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 Uh, consider a motion to approve 2020 funds for utilization of Olson's uh, Master Professional Services. Does anyone want to take that? Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. So I sat before you uh, two months ago requesting 2019 funds for an extension on the Olson contract for on-call engineering services. Um, so I'm now requesting 2020 funds for the Olson contract for on-call engineering services. They have continued to help with all of our sales tax projects, building our CIP, um, E58, and all of our other various bridges and roadway projects, uh, as well as day-to-day. -day. And uh, Olson works with planning and zoning, correct? On your correct, staff? yes. So okay. they, they work with both us and uh, planning are and zoning. They, are they... In the planning and zoning part, do they do? I guess this is for Crystal. Do they do? Uh, they review plats also and stuff like that. Okay, how's their timing on that? Is it acceptable? I mean, morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I think that they're doing a great job. Um, they okay. turn stuff around pretty quickly. They're incredibly thorough. Um, they have been Notice great that. to work with. So. Okay. So. It's, quicker than when we do it in-house, in looking when we had our own staff looking at reviewing plats? I, oftentimes it is, yes, they have more staff at their disposal than, than we have, certainly. Um, we have had a lot on the agendas the last few months. Well, so. I know we're, we're, we've been, the last six months or so, we've been trying to catch up on everything everybody's behind on, and I understand. I was just wondering if it's, we're getting more caught up now to where we can really see the benefit of an outside agency doing all this. I think so. Okay. I, and I can, I can promise you with everything that's going on in my office, um, if it is something that were to stay strictly in my office and not delegated out to Olson, mm -hmm. the time would be much longer. Okay. All right. Um, I feel like we're getting a lot of bang for our buck out of this. You know, instead of paying one person this amount, we're getting a whole team. Right. right. And I just want to make sure the time, yeah. you know, for like uh, plat reviews and utility relocation, mm -hmm. 120 days on the dust abatement projects. How many more days we got left on that? Unfortunately, some of that are things that we, of course, can't, can't control. As you know, we can't. Right. No one in my staff, Crystal staff, right. or an Olson staff can speed up the utility companies. Mm -hmm. But right. well, um, I'm just, you know, they gave us 120 days. I'm right. just, but who's counting? I am. Um, but. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so 
uh, staff is thinks this is great and it's what we need. Um, like I said, I entertain a motion to approve the uh, agreement for professional services. With Olson not to exceed one hundred fifty thousand dollars, so yes. move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Um, <clears throat> Just the fact that Olson has already a track record of saving the county money. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, I just want to make sure everything's <coughs> staying on time. You know, the stuff's right. not set, <coughs> and I don't know if it is or not. I'm just asking the question. If stuff doesn't get sent. It sets there and get stacked up on somebody's desk when you're a bunch of paperwork. It's not. And voting. Aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioners. <coughs> now we're ready for Crystal. I figured I might as well just stay here. You might as well just stay right Have where a you're at. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Lauren. Sorry about the delay. We had a technical difficulty this morning with a dead computer, but we think it has enough juice now. They're low bid. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, this is a case for, uh, this is not a resolution, so I've already fumbled my words here, I apologize. Um, this is a special use permit request for Puppuccino's Doggy Daycare. Um, the applicants have been operating at this location for over a year. Um, they do have their state license, they did not have their special use permit. They came to, they came to planning and zoning staff's attention late last summer that they were operating a doggy daycare um, boarding facility. So we sent a letter to them and said, you need to come in and get a special use permit. Um, we took this case to the Planning Commission a couple of months ago with a recommendation of denial. Um, the reason for that is, pull this up here, is due to the size of the property. It's just a little over an acre. It sits in the middle of other parcels that are about <coughs> an acre in size. Um, for consistency's sake, staff felt that the applicants would not be able to meet the standard conditions that we bring forward for kennels, one of those being the decibels at the lot line. I'm sorry, I don't think this is going to come up. You do have a map yeah, showing no, I've, the I've properties looked at of the property. Um, I'm sure the other commissioners have too. So uh, we, we all know where it's at. Right. Um, so we had recommended denial. We took it to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission um, expressed um, interest in us bringing back conditions that they could approve this with. Some members of the Planning Commission did. So we took this back in December. Um, we had worked with the applicant. We had talked with her about what the standard conditions are. Again, one of those standard conditions is that the decibels be 60, 60 decibels or below at the property line. The dogs are housed right on the property line, so they're, just, they're not able to meet that requirement. Um, the Planning Commission took a vote for approval. That vote failed, um, so we effectively have a recommendation of denial. Um, we do have conditions that are established, as I've said several times. Um, you all may consider those conditions, certainly. Ms. Dela Cruz is here and will answer any questions that you may have. Uh, I had a question. How, how long has this been, uh, have they been operating? Um, over a year. Too. Over a year? Yeah, I believe over a year. Okay. Yeah. This requires I'll, I'll, a follow up with her. I, because I, okay. I, I did talk to her, but I don't remember exactly how long it was. That's was it a year and a half or two or? Yeah, it's uh, so we started off in September. Th this past September would have been a year. Um, September 3rd was the day our first um, dog had arrived. So. Um, yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and open up the public hearing then on this. Is that 
So uh, we'll move uh, out of regular session, open up a public hearing for uh, case number DEV-19-103. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this? I got 106. Huh? Doesn't matter. I got 103. Hmm. Okay. I'm looking at the agenda. Uh, okay. You're looking at. Yes. Hi, I'm Eileen Campsey, and we own uh, the property in question at 16425 and 16427 Fort Riley Road. My daughter. Um, has our power of attorney and she runs that property for us. We work overseas with the U.S. government in the country of Georgia, training the U.S. Army and the uh, Georgian Army. And um, uh, I uh, deferred a trip to come back here to see this uh, government process work. That's very interesting. I, again, I appreciate the fact that Mr. Stephen came out yesterday to see the property and to talk about um, what was happening. I do believe the issue um, is uh, uh, noise on the property, as uh, Ms. Crystal has mentioned. I work with a colleague who's responsible for um, organizing all of the data that simulates all of the requirements for training U.S. Army soldiers and foreign Army soldiers. He makes sure that all of that data is accurate and works properly, and he did all of the research to establish uh, the dissipation of noise in terms of decibels. Um, on, in, in specified areas, you've been provided a copy of the map that shows um, how those calculations work and how the noise spreads out. 60 decibels um, is what is noted for a normal conversation. So if I got mad at my neighbor and I yelled at him across the property line, he and I would be louder than 60 decibels. I've been in the yard all week with the dogs. Rarely do the dogs bark. So of course, all dogs bark at some point or another, but it's not constant, it's not consistent, and it's not loud. All of the neighbors, including the gentleman who is on the affected property line directly, was at your first planning commission meeting to indicate that those noises did not affect him at all, did not bother him. He enjoys having the dogs there. My daughter has provided a petition from all of the neighbors in the affected area that say they also do not object to the noise in the area and that it does not create a problem um, in our neighborhood. Um, again, we didn't even realize we needed a special use permit and I apologize for that. Um, we live in the country, there are cows, there are donkeys, there's the windmill that squeaks incessantly next door. So it, um, it didn't occur to us that having animals there would be a problem and as soon as we, uh, my daughter was notified, that problem was rectified and we apologize that that didn't come to your attention immediately. But in the over a year that it's been in operation, there's been one anonymous complaint, which we can't even address directly, um, about a noise issue. And so to me, that's the only problem that stands in the way of this permit being issued. Um, she's made uh, extreme efforts to do special um, composting for the waste problems, that, uh, waste issues that might occur on the property. Um, she consults with uh, a specialist in that area, pet waste in Australia, using his products, using his um, technique to take care of the waste on the property. All of that, I believe, um, uh, increases the, uh, the value of the property and uh, supports the neighbors in the area. And so I am definitely in support of this. Uh, this is their life. Her husband has, um, has quit his job in order for them to effectively take care of these animals on the property. And we want to make sure that we do things the right way in the district and that we support the county, but I believe they've gone out of their way to do that. She's um, taken the time to meet all of the neighbors, which I must confess is more than I did uh, when we were leaving there before we went overseas to work. So she knows the neighbors. They have her card. If there were any problem in the future, I feel like they would come to her um, and express that problem. So I would just, if you have any questions of me, I just um, want to strenuously support well, I, I guess I understand the confusion being you were licensed by the state. Normally the, <laughs> normally the county doesn't supersede the state. but. I guess in this situation it does as far as additional uh, conditions that could be applied. Of course. And we want to make sure that we do everything that the, that the county requires for them to be in compliance, but I feel like there aren't any objections anywhere in the affected area. And in the map you, you have that we provided with the decimal levels, 
That sound will dissipate to 60 decibels before it reaches another piece of property that has a residence, a person residing. And that doesn't take into account the fact that we are at lower elevation, that the wind blows, that the trees are blowing, that there are all kinds of other mitigating circumstances that will cause that noise to dissipate. So if that's the major um, concern, I feel like that that's been addressed several times over at several different meetings now. Um, Whatever else you might like me to address with that, I will try and help. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this uh, special use permit? Yes. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, as a member of the uh, Lumber County Planning Commission, um, I have heard um, the, um, the neighbors from Papachino's stand here and say that it is not affecting them. We have also been presented with the petition the last time and I feel that even though these are, these are not standard um, acreage for this kind of a business in the state of Kansas, I personally feel that this a young woman has done the utmost to mitigate any kind of problems in the area. And I mean, I live uh, partially in the country too, so I have noisy animals out back of me and, uh, and cows in the front. So I can't complain about the noise factor. So mm -hmm. I definitely would support them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Yes. Good morning. My Good name morning. is Connie Forgey. Yeah. I live on 16259 Fort Riley Road, just up the road from the uh, location in question. And um, while I have complained about other noise-making features in Salt Creek Valley and off of Santa Fe Trail in the past, this one I have no complaints about whatsoever. I never even hear the dogs. I hear cows, tractors, trucks, a donkey, a horse, but I don't hear the dogs barking, so they, they don't bother me. You hear coyotes? coyotes. Coyotes all the time, yep. yes. <laughs> so I just, just wanted to let you know that as a neighbor, it doesn't bother me. I know it doesn't bother the neighbor that's on the adjacent property with the lady in question, so I uh, can't imagine. I just can't imagine. I know a car goes down the road, the dogs all run to the fence, they bark, they quit. It's just not any worse than any other dogs that anybody has out in the neighborhood and these dogs are kept restrained within the fence all the time I see other dogs in the trash running around across the highway etc mm -hmm. but these dogs are well taken care of thank okay. you all right thank you Connie anyone else wish to speak in favor anyone wish oh okay Good morning, I'm Connie Job. So I didn't stammer, I wrote a note. The Leavenworth community is in need of Puppuccino service. This is a dog care in a real home to be able to socialize and never be lonely, which also provides long-term stay. Military leave for training or deployment choose to leave their beloved family members with Puppuccinos, knowing it's home away from home. Puppuccino service also take the canine family member to appointments, to the groomer, veterinarian, as well as pickup and delivery back home. The grounds have a turf for cleanliness, comfort, as it also helps the noise control for better acoustics. A point on noise control. These pets are not in the yard unsupervised. Their attention is redirected upon excitement. Having the whole clan bark simultaneously is less than hearing the three dog, neighbor dogs. It seems worse as owner is not present while pet is being aired out. Being state licensed, veterinary inspected grounds, business insured, ready to be liable for any incident unforeseeable. This business is a pioneer of dog care excellence. Other than more than three dogs, it is not a kennel in the farthest reach. The neighbors are looking forward to the success of this business. The neighbors know the responsible, respectable people Catherine and Gustavo are. Only good character witnesses. Thank you for this opportunity to provide the facts of this much needed service in the area. 
that my two pets enjoy get excited to go spend time with their four-legged and two-legged extended family. Thank you. I thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Okay. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this special use permit? Seeing none, we'll close public hearing and return to regular session. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the special use permit. And it's also got a resolution. So it does not have a resolution because it came from the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended denial. Oh, okay. So we would bring a resolution back next. So we'll have to bring a resolution. We'd bring a resolution back next week if the board wants to proceed with it. Okay. So move to bring it back. You want to have a discussion? Yeah. Gonna, if there was any questions of me as well. So. If we have discussion before we do a motion. Well, we'll do a motion. Well, well, yeah, you we can, can discuss after the motions. Either one. Yeah. yeah. So, any discussion then? Well, the, our motion may like change. If we discuss it, we might want to yeah. put you know, requirements on it. You'll have to make the motion first. Well, I mean, maybe we should just. Well. We can have a motion and discussion. Yeah, okay, before we as before it? we vote. Yeah, you want to make it? Uh, no, I can't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else probably would. Yes, sir. Better. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, good morning. Uh, if I could offer a suggestion, you do have staff who's familiar with uh, other kennels that are located in the county. Uh, the Puppuccinos and I was president of the planning commission hearings, and, is, and Commissioner Labie is correct. Uh, this matter was discussed. The real sticking point was the size of the uh, lot, the, the one acre. The other conditions were discussed and were considered to be relatively standard. In the interest of proceeding, perhaps your staff could put those conditions in the resolution and you could consider at your meeting at, uh, next Wednesday. Well, like I said, that's they're licensed by the state. <clears throat> I think that satisfies a lot of concerns. I mean, if this was something that we were approving, and then they had to go to the state to get approval. That'd be a little different deal. Yeah. I also wanted to say about the size of our lot. I understand um, there's another kennel in operation in Baser called Country View Kennels. They have a five-acre plot, um, which obviously is a lot larger than us. Um, the gentleman who owns it and I have discussed at length his actual yard size versus his lot size. So he has 2,200 square feet of yard size with a 20-dog max capacity. Um, and so, essentially, when you think about it, Crystal has listed our lot size for the yard. Uh, obviously, not the whole. The whole plot is like 1.4 acres, but our yard size is a tenth of an acre. Well, a tenth of an acre is 43,000 square feet, or an acre is 43,000. So a tenth of that is 4,300. Even with our the conditions of max number of dogs at 20, we exceed all those other special use permits by more than 200 square feet per dog. So. Sure, our overall lot size is small, but the area that the dogs are contained in is large. And I think the only difference that makes is that when the dogs bark on a five acre plot, when they're contained in 2,200 square feet, that sound dissipates by the property line. So I don't know that, that maybe the lot size is the issue or more the sound is the issue, but I think they kind of go hand in hand. Um, the big thing about it is that that sound dissipates over space. So yes, we are two feet off of a property line. That property owner came to the meeting and said, and I think it still rings true to me because it was very kind words of him that the, dot and the noise does not bother him and he thinks we're doing a great job. This is a gentleman who would be most directly impacted. Um, but the fact of it is, is that that 60 decibel dissipates before you reach any residence. The things most closely affected are a Hayfield in my neighbor's detached garage. Um, outside of that, that sound is not reaching anyone's home, um, and that's just with straight sound dissipation. So, do you, do you consider your your company to be a kennel? I do not. Um, I would never ever say that my business is a kennel. Um, I do understand that the county stipulates if you have more than four dogs, you're a kennel. Um, what does the state say? Do they say more that? than four dogs, you're a kennel. Okay. Yep. Um, I think there are some vast differences between a kennel and our business. Um, a, like Country View Kennels, it's even in the name. They have a mortar building, so you know, it sits out there. They have their 20 stalls lined up, and the dogs are in there. The gentleman goes out three times a day and lets the dogs run for 20 minutes to 30 minutes each time, and puts them back in. 
Hey, can I just turn to staff? You at the Planning Commission consider it to be a kennel, as far as you were. That was discussed at the Planning Commission. Yes, our right. definition of a kennel is any property that's less than 20 acres or seven dogs are kept boarded bred, whether or not for personal or for profit purposes. So this meets the definition of a kennel. Okay, then there was this case in 2017 <laughs> that mm -hmm. my attention was brought to where a kennel over in Baser was denied. Correct. We Can have you draw a distinction between the two? Would you tell me what you consider, like, what the differences be? I remember that one wasn't registered with the state, was it? <laughs> That, if I remember correctly, that was a case, um, they raised dogs, they bred dogs. Um, sold was a puppy dogs. Mill. Sold yeah. dogs. It was yeah. a, but it still met the, our definition of a the, kennel. The acreage requirement was met, but the noise requirement was not. So, But it was it, in a subdivision as well. It was it in was a subdivision. It was determined that it did not meet the character of the neighborhood. That was actually on a parcel that was, I believe, five acres, six acres, something like that, um, on a parcel that was significantly larger than, than this one. However, it was part of what we consider with the golden factors is character of the neighborhood and whether or not special use permit will negatively or positively impact the character of the neighborhood in that case from a couple of years ago. Wasn't there a ballot protest, too, on that one? Yes, it was a very yeah, contentious. Yeah, it was a ballot protest. Um, however, staff's recommendation Long and, before the protest, petition. and it was not licensed by the state. I don't remember I don't specifically. Think it was. And I could be wrong on that. Well, I'd have to I'd... dig through here and see. If, I don't know about that part. But anyway, I just want—I know that we did turn down a a kennel over there. So I'm just wondering if, like, according to our rules that we have right now established, this wouldn't exactly fit. But if maybe we should return this back to planning and zoning and maybe establish, you know, she would continue to operate. I mean, but, but we would establish a separate category so that everybody fits within. So, so we're following the rules Consistent. instead of just making an exception. I'm just throwing that out there. I'd like to just just point out just just for the sake of pointing something out is that there are several no and I know that's their city county but within the city like of Leavenworth there are several doggy daycares whatever you, I mean are that are on far less acreage I mean they're in just buildings over on off of Eisenhower Road in the in the um, business park there is a, a pet care center and then I think over on Esplanade Am, am I correct? I mean, I. Other official kennels. If you but I'm go, saying, but I mean, on much smaller. I mean, they're not even close to being on an acre. They're on a in a building or you know in a yard. So I, I'm just saying, when it comes to the acreage, I understand that we have the limits. But I just think that it's it's interesting to me that that the size of the lot is and when we're talking about the county mm -hmm. and. It yeah. just, I just think it's interesting. <clears throat> One thing to point out, I don't think that it's necessarily when you're, I mean, those are very valid issues, but they're in an area that's zoned right. with an allowed use. The only reason this requires a special use permit is because it's not zoned appropriately, and this is not an allowed use in that zoning. Okay. That in. So the change that you might be discussing, Commissioner Stephen, would be to make that an allowed use, and I don't think that would be um, desirable in to make an allowed use being kennels in residential neighborhoods. Right, I understand. So okay. the, the, I think this is the right process. I, I don't think we need to change the process. The special use permit is the right process. It's, and the rules, we already have rules established for this. And if you look in your packet under suggested conditions, the only thing I believe they struggle with is the 60 decibels at the property line. Right. So that's why it was, it was denied at the Planning and Zoning Commission level because they can't meet that typical requirement. So I think if you wanted to approve this, then the recommendation would be to have staff draft the resolution with the exception of the 60 decibels at the property line, remove that from the resolution. Because clearly, um, if, and I don't know decibels, that's not my area, but and and I, I believe that that would be a normal conversation mm -hmm. at the property yes, line. Clearly they. Clearly, they and could it, not meet that. So anything, I think if you wanted to approve it, you would direct us to draft a resolution with that stipulation removed. 
all the other stipulations would be in there and we could definitely bring that back for your consideration and then the bottom line would be that if there all of a sudden becomes complaints over the noise over a period of time that special use permit could be pulled correct I think mr. Culbertson uh, informed me of that that it's um, revocable at any time and if there's complaints that come in, then violated. it comes back for, for perhaps removal so I think we've we, th we thoroughly understand that if we get a special use permit, we can't just do whatever we want, and right. um, that we still have to maintain all of those conditions and good relations with our neighbors and controls over the noise. And I mean, I think well, we I noticed that. that we didn't, and, and through the whole process, like planning and zoning, and here, we never had anyone that came before a public hearing and An opposition and gave us opposition. That we had an anonymous phone call. And I think maybe when we have a work session on on our procedures on on uh, planning and zoning, uh, you know, if we have these, uh, if you're going to request uh, for com uh, complaints that could result in denial of a special per use permit, maybe it should be in writing. Um, and, and I mean, if you just are complaining about your neighbor's trash or something that the county can take care of, that's one thing. But if you're actually making a complaint. They could result in upending a business through the denial of a special use permit. That probably should be in writing. So I would like to, to clarify that while there was a complaint made, it's very common that residents will call and say, I think my neighbor's operating a business. Do they have a permit to do that? And then our code enforcement officer goes and checks that out. And that's essentially exactly what happened. The, na the neighbor or somebody in the vicinity called and said, I think my neighbor is operating a kennel. There's 15 dogs <coughs> out there. Do they have a permit? Our code enforcement officer looked and said, no, they don't. She went out, she took a look and said, <coughs> yes, this is definitely a kennel and they need a special use permit. Our report, we did not try to hammer home the fact that there, we just stated there had been one complaint, which is essentially what led us to knowing that this was, was there. So that wasn't in and of itself a reason for denial, it's specifically those golden factors, the character of the neighborhood. And while the we don't have a minimum lot size per se, we don't have anywhere in the regulations that says okay. it has to be 10 acres. We look more at the character of the neighborhood. Um, these are all rare, rather small parcels, which the noise is the issue. Um, as Ms. Dela Cruz said, she doesn't have enough property space in order for that noise to dissipate before it starts reaching other properties. And the properties surrounding her are also small properties by and large. So I just want to clarify that the complaint was not the reason right. that we were recommending it now. That's what led us to know that. But if you mow your yard, you're not going to meet the decimal. That's decimals. correct. Well, and I was out there yesterday and I heard no barking, but I heard mooing of cows. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> yes. to me, the character, that, that tells you right there what the character of the neighborhood is. It's very rural, very rural. agricultural. Sure, yes. Oh. And unlike other kennels, you don't keep caged dogs outside overnight. No, sir. They, uh, I think that's inside. one big difference. Some dogs are kenneled <laughs> in kennel that you have in your home for your dog overnight um, if they're going to eat my furniture. But otherwise, they, they sit on a couch or a mattress or on the carpet on the floor. So they're, it's, I think that's the, the point of I understand the regulations of a kennel. I would never call myself that because it's an in-home boarding, basically a luxury pet hotel. Um, they're in our care 24 hours a day. They run around our house and sleep on our couch. And um, so it, for me, it's a very different. Um, but I also believe that's probably why we charge more than a kennel would because of the care that we provide and the personalization and the experience that they have at your home and our home. Um, so while I would never characterize it as a kennel, I understand that due to the number of dogs that are on the location, <coughs> Excuse me. the current standard for a kennel. It's just unfortunate when you apply for a license at the state, they don't tell you, hey, you right. need to go to your local I do admit I didn't, um, I didn't know that I needed a special use permit. Um, I, I'm definitely not one to ever um, <coughs> want to try to do something in secret or underground or um, so. I can say that when I received the letter from planning and zoning, I called as soon as I opened the mail and I had my packet in the next day. 
um, which include a four-page narrative of our business and lots of documents. I mean, I gathered those, those items overnight and turned it in the next day um, just to further along that process because I had no need to wait. I, this is our business. This is our livelihood. My husband was a chef and quit his job, and this is how we pay our bills. And the second I knew I needed it, <coughs> I got it in because there's no... There's no trying to hide anything here. I, I want to have the permit. I want to be friends with my neighbors. I want to be able to operate my business. Um, and I, I want to be able to find a way to do that. And, and I understand that the noise is the issue, and I can guarantee you we work relentlessly to redirect, misdirect, put dogs in at times we know people are coming. I mean, we, we tirelessly work to be friends with our neighbors and not cause complaints and issues. So. So I have a question for Crystal. Um, <coughs> if we like make an exception, <coughs> an exception here and carve out an exception for this, do you foresee that as creating issues with other kennels across the county as far as what regulations we currently have in place? Or do you think that we can work this exception and still be able to move forward with our current regulations? So again, are the conditions are while they're standard conditions, they're not laid out in our zoning and subdivision regulations. We have a number of kennels throughout the county um, that are that are operating on parcels anywhere from five to over twenty acres in size. And we just for standardization's sake, we have put these same conditions, the big one here of course being the decibels. Um, there are always consequences to decisions, certainly. Um, however, we, we have the factors to be considered, the golden factors, and we go through those thoroughly. Um, and we try our best to make sure that whatever it is that an applicant has come forward, that we can, um, that we can suggest approval with, those with that, the factors to be considered. Um, sometimes we're unable to do that because we have had, I don't want to say precedent set, hate using that word but again because we've just had a standardization of some things of course as a board you are able to modify those conditions if you see fit um, and continue to do so in the future well I think this is definitely a service that's needed in our community what was it a couple weeks ago we just had to give eleven thousand dollars to uh, an organization that takes care of animals that people don't want to take care of and they're on less than an acre. Uh, I mean, they, <laughs> yeah. Well, I said I. I mean. So I thought, you know, we had discussion about this isn't really fit the exact definition that the county has for a kennel, I don't think. And so we had a discussion about maybe kicking it back and coming up with a subcategory or another category description for this type of business. But. Um, after we talked about that some more, I think it'd be better uh, to just go ahead and I would like to make a motion to approve uh, case number DV19-103, Puppuccino's Doggy Daycare, um, with the conditions of a five-year SUP instead of 10, and that they work with planning to come up with a six-foot wood privacy fence and a row of evergreen trees on the outside of that. And that would should address the noise issue. I could second that. Now, will you be incorporating like that? That doesn't incorporate all the the requirements. The planning and zoning was going to have them pay a road fee. You know, all those that list. You're, you're just incorporating just the ones you mentioned. Additional conditions. But but not right. not the ones that were listed by planning and zoning. Um, that should address <laughs> the noise ones, the size one. You can't really. But not the as far as the traffic fee and all that. that no, I think that we still have that. You still the have conditions. Okay. Yeah. So that's the conditions of, that's in addition. It's additional yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I just yeah. didn't get it in my head how, how and that was. And then in the discussion, I was going to talk more about where to put that. I think. Okay. So did you second that, Commissioner Cause? Okay, yeah. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? So what we would yes. do would bring a resolution next week with the additional conditions plus the conditions that were presented. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yes. And so now for discussion, um, I talked to, I think, the anonymous call, and that was the concession that we kind of made was, you know, I tried to explain it to them, you know, 
uh, we're trying to be pro-business. Uh, my bottom line is trying to lower people's taxes. So if you put a business out of business, their taxes are going to go up. My taxes are going to go up. Everybody's taxes have to compensate for that. So the business pays over double the taxes that a residence would pay if that was turned back into a house. So I asked them on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, how much, how, how difficult is this to deal with? And so once we started talking about some things, uh, this was the concession we come up with, is a wood fence and a row of trees pretty much took care of all their concerns. Plus the fact that, you know, it's a SUP, not a permanent, you know, like I talked to you about. And they don't have a problem with that. Um, as far as where to put it, uh, I think part of the problem is there's no, it's just a wire fence, so the sound carries 100%. So a wood fence and a row of evergreen trees, you know, we've seen cases where that severely uh, drops the decibel level. Um, you can't really do that out front because there'd be some line of sight problems with traffic. Um, so I think in the back would be a better place for that. But you don't want to go all the way in the back of the property because then that puts you closer to the two houses that are back there. Nice. So in the middle, I think would be a better place. So I think if you are willing to uh, work with that, then I I don't see a, an issue. A privacy fence in our backyard, and to have the dogs play. In Either the half of the front yard, you know, because I don't think you'll be able to go all the way to the road because the line of sight problems you're going to create with traffic. So either half of the front yard, or in the backyard, not all the way in the back. You know where I'm talking about in the middle. Because <laughs> yep, you want to still stay away from the, the houses. Back 40 in the right. Backyard in the front yard. Yeah, yeah. And that's not for Backyard, yeah. I think, might work better. And I think that took care of their issues. So. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Voting. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. I will bring a resolution forward next week. Okay. We have. We're back. Resolution number one, right? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, I have a re resolution 20-2001 um, recommended approval. This is a request for a special use permit for Vitus Mechanical. Um, this special use permit has been in operation for nearly 15 years. Uh, Mr. Stamp operates on heavy um, farm machinery and such. He operates on three to four trucks per week. Um, I believe he said at the Planning Commission that that number has even decreased a little bit in the last couple of years. His hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 12 noon on Saturdays. He's operated at this location, like I said, for 15 years. There have been no complaints. We've had no issues. Um, Mr. Stamp is here and will answer any questions you may have, as will I. All right. We'll uh, open up the public hearing uh, on this special use permit. Come forward. Good morning. My name is Dale Stamp. I am the business owner, and I would like to address any questions that you have. You need a sign out for us so everybody knows you're <laughs> back there. Thank you. Just a bunch of round bells out there doesn't say. Well, that was a request that I had asked for at the uh, zoning appeals meeting. I had some parts delivered inadvertently to some neighbors oh. and there is no signage or anything and I requested that I be allowed to put something just to say I agree this is where I am turn here <laughs> I agree uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval of that request so yeah, Mr. Okay. Stamp will just need to fill out a sign application and, okay but yeah he can Actually, I know you were there, but it's by word of mouth. I mean, somebody told me that you had a business back there. And like I said. Uh, On an additional note to that, after that hearing was over, when I was standing out in the hallway, I was approached by four people wanting to know if they could employ my services to work on their well, that's why. well good <laughs> well we're giving you live coverage today i beg your pardon. we're giving you live coverage today on youtube you can so do we'll it in commercial plug for you. but anyways no you're definitely there's there's limited places to take equipment <clears throat> around our area i think you provide a good service um, but like i said i'd like to see you have a sign up there and at least advertising so 
I will be happy to comply with your wishes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone uh, wishing to speak in favor of this special use permit? Anybody wishing to speak in opposition of this special use permit? Uh, we'll close public hearing, return to regular session. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to approve or deny resolution 2020-1. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? This is 10 years, correct? Correct. Voting? Aye. 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 Sorry to take up so much of your time this morning. But... Commissioners, this is a request for a special use permit for a bait and tackle shop. It's a request to approve resolution 20 20, pardon me, 2020 02. Um, like I said, this is a special use permit for a bait and tackle shop um, owned by or potentially owned by Mr. Barron. Uh, this business does not currently exist. He has approached us um, over the summer wanting to turn his existing shop into just a small bait and tackle. He would sell prepackaged snacks, sandwiches, um, waters, that sort of thing. He anticipates the business being very seasonal in nature. It's out by the state fishing lake. Um, he's hoping for 30 to 40 customers per week. Um, that would, of course, be spread out through the week, heavier concentration on the weekends, but then spread out through the day. Staff does not anticipate this causing any sorts of issues um, for the surrounding area and recommended approval, as did the Planning Commission. I believe Mr. Barron is here and will answer any questions you have, as will I. All right. We'll open up the public hearing uh, for the bait and tackle shop. Mr. Barron, how are you? I've had teeth removed, so oh. not really. Oh, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> boy, I think I can relate to that. <laughs> uh, uh, it's one of the things that I was just this that? Yeah. was this evening. <laughs> oh. So I apologize for my appearance, but I had about 26 minutes to get here, and I made it. Well, so, no, you well, had an hour to get here. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, but, just, but like I said, oh my. the side of my face is just wiped out. But if anything, I can answer. I'm no, I world. think it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't. Your uh, location is great for what you want to do yep. uh, yeah. out there by the state fishing lake. And uh, there's not a whole lot of places you drive by that sell bait anymore out there. Yep, it's uh, cool to have that opportunity yeah, for people. Everything closed. Everything closed. And, yep. and I've heard I'm kind of a fool for doing it, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, that's not the first time I've heard that. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So. <laughs> Like I said, I've read everything. I know where you're at. Um, I'm at the point now, of, like I say, it started on the 11th. I'm sorry, but it started on the 11th, and I'm scrambling the jets trying to get, you know, everything ready to go for opening season because mm -hmm. it's coming. Right. And, uh, but I've, I've, done, I've done everything I can do. I've got all my licenses through the state. Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a lot of regulations now. And, um, but I've complied with all those. And I've gone with uh, all the state and uh, feds and everybody else. And uh, I've got my suppliers. My suppliers are the, the legal responsible suppliers here. Mm -hmm. And they will be regulated and checked to make sure that there's no invasive species or anything like that comes in. Uh, it's a little over the board for me for having just a bait shop, but right. whatever they want to do. You okay. know, it's all open. I'm good. And, I'm just looking for a little business in my retirement to, you know, I don't know. Uh, Might turn into a big business if you're well, in the game in yeah, town. You, you know, like to socialize? My friends were telling me, they said, you've had the gates closed on the place for three years, and now you're opening it up like Willie Wonka, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but I just look for, you know, okay. a small business. I don't, I don't, I, you know, but you never know. And okay. uh, right. I, I'm willing to grow with it. Okay. Like I say, the appearance is kind of a train wreck today, so if it would have been 6 o'clock, I'd have looked a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> you look Thank fine. You. Anyone else uh, wishing to speak in favor of this uh, special use permit? Seeing none, anyone in opposition? And we'll close public hearing, return to regular session. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Might, like to I might bring up one thing. Um, this does have a recommendation for a trafficked impact fee. These are the types of businesses that we've discussed in the past that uh, when we change our policy that would likely not require a traffic impact fee. I don't know if the commission wants to consider that now or not, or if you want to just wait until we change our policy. Well, 
we'll all get a motion in a second. We'll discuss that. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2020.2, a special use permit for bait and tackle shop, as outlined, and less the traffic fee. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Because it's on state highway, right? Not, not that it's on a state highway, but we've talked about these smaller businesses going oh. to a three-tier approach on those traffic impact right. fees, either no fee, flat fee, or a full traffic study. I think the volume on this one would definitely fall within the no fee, and well, we are in the process of working that out. I'd say that the only people that are going to be driving on the road are heading to the state lake to go fishing anyways. They're not going to go to Mr. Barron's business and buy bait and probably go somewhere else. So his driveway would probably be the only impact that's going to be an increase because they're going to go to the state fishing lake anyways. Mm -hmm. current, current policy requires the staff puts yeah. that in there. I just right. wanted to point it out that you might want to consider Well, his motion it. was to uh, waive it. Waive it, so. But they're uh, supposedly, aren't they, uh, Chipman Zealand 251st? Yes, sir. That's yeah, on just, the dust debate. It's just on the thing. That just, that just came up on one of the things. That's all I got. Did you get a letter on that? Yes, I did. Then I guess it's going to happen. Yeah, Providing we get the phone lines moved in 120 days. <laughs> Are we now, still counting down? No, I'm not counting. <laughs> I'm happy being in the country. Yep. Okay. So any further discussion on the motion? Voting? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Baird. We'll see you in the water. Yep. <laughs> Thanks very much. Moving right along. This is a request for a special use permit for a bed and breakfast. Um, this is resolution 20 dash, tw sorry, 2020 dash 04. Um, we recommend approval of this. Mr. and Mrs. Fackrell um, have a small cabin on their property, which they use primarily for friends and family um, to stay in. However, they do also um, advertise this on Airbnb and other sites. They have six to eight um, customers per month who come out and use it just as a regular bed and breakfast. Um, Staff recommends approval of this, as did the Planning Commission. Um, I will answer any questions you may have, as will Ms. Fackrell. Okay. I don't have any, so we'll just open up the public hearing. Uh, and open the pub public hearing on the Sacred Hearts Healing Center. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor or explain the application? <laughs> Hi. I'm Jana Thackrell. Um, my husband and I submitted the application. I'm just here if you have any questions. I've read the information. I read the packet. I don't have any questions. Mr. Stevens? No, oh, looks good. Then we'll, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? And we'll close public hearing and return to regular session. I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Like to Go ahead. That we approve resolution 2020-2, or dash three, a special use permit for bread and breakfast uh, for Sacred Hearts Healing Center. This one also this, has this impact is, fees. So is it, would this be one that would also apply to the what we just did? Less the traffic impact fee. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 I think we've done pretty good on businesses today. <laughs> Getting some businesses in the county. We've done this Thank every you. week. Thank you. I can feel the taxes going down. I can feel the taxes <laughs> going down too. <laughs> uh, if we could just do this every week. Okay. All right, wow. Mister. Wow. This is my last this item before you. Nice. I'm sure you are ready for me to go away. You're like our mm. superstar today. No, I can tell you. I need you. I need you to stay here. Thank you. Thank you. We could, if we could do businesses like this all day, we'd answer a lot more problems. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Um, commissioners, this is a request for a text amendment. Um, this is resolution 2020-04. Um, which we are recommending approval on. Just a little bit of background. Our current definition for an adult slash group home simply does not meet the state definition. 
Um, so we need to update that. The proposed definition does meet the state definition. Um, we have also um, changed this or are working on changing this in our table of uses. Currently, it requires a special use permit, which we cannot require a special use permit for a type one group home. So we're working on amending that also. As you all know, we have lots of changes that are taking place in the table of uses. Uh, but we are getting this definition amended. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval of it. Staff obviously recommends approval of it. And I'll answer any questions that you may have. Will this impact the uh, Joy Meadows no, sir. situation? Mm -hmm. I guess I'm, this is, my question would be the senior county counselor. Mr. Chairman, uh, staff has worked with me on this, and I fully support this action. Okay. Does any other commissioners have any questions? Mm -hmm. Senior county counselor? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve resolution 2020-04. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion on the... Uh, well, I just... One thing about it. What, what, are, what brought this to the, the front for the planning board to need to consider? So... Huh? Joy Meadows. Well, um... Joy Meadows partially, um, they're also, um, we, it had been brought to our attention previously um, with the county um, counselor that we needed to amend this definition. Um, but I think Joy Meadows certainly was, was part of that, yes. Okay, but it doesn't impact them, you said? No, no it does not, it does not, but, but, at all. But we have bad definitions compared to uh, the state. We didn't have bad definitions, this is Outdated. a better definition. Oh, we have a bad. Outdated, the other one was. Words, very good. New and improved, not saying the old one was old and inadequate. It's just new and <coughs> Got it. Any further discussion? <coughs> Voting? Aye. 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 Crystal, I just had a quick question. When uh, you got, we approve SUPs and you guys run them through. You have a system set up to notify the appraisers, right, on a regular basis every time an SUP in there. We do notified. have a system in place where we um, pass information along to them. I will check to find out how efficient that system is. I do know that special use permits get caught by the, the appraisers. I will speak with Mr. Weber and find out if okay. we're doing the best we can do or if there's something mm -hmm. we can do better. Cool. So, back and sort of on that, but it's we already talked about it a little bit, but on a special use permit, let's say you're running a doggy daycare, and I am your competitor down the road, and for whatever reason, I decide that I want to complain about you anonymously. Under a current policy, that's permitted, correct? So, of course, if, if you want to call and speak with a code enforcement officer, our code enforcement officer will definitely listen to you. We do have a written complaint form that if it's escalating, that needs to be filled out. If it, again, if it's, hey, I think my neighbor's running a business, do they have a special, a special use permit? Then you go look into it. Then we go look into it. But if it is, we do have a couple of instances out in the county where there are feuding neighbors and we have a big stack of formal complaints from both neighbors. Um, so, um, well, I just think that if we have a business operating, like I think of all the cabinet makers we have and all the, you know, before we just let an anonymous person, I, I think it should be a more formalized. Yes, of course. If we were looking at does this special use permit need to be revoked, we're not going to say, oh, we got a phone call and this neighbor is really mad, so we need to take this back through the process to have it revoked. You're going to require it. We're going to require a written complaint code enforcement officer is going to go out and take a look at it we're going to work with the county council but if it's anonymous you're not going to know if it's a neighbor what well, one of the things and commissioner you and i talked about this yesterday the complaint just brings it to the attention of staff staff then has to follow up and, and document that it's an, a valid complaint we don't just assume that the complaint's valid so if it, like in this case if somebody called and said there's a noise <laughs> issue we would go out, but they didn't. What they called and said, we think they're operating a business unlicensed, and we found out they were. 
But if they would call up and say, hey, now that they have, the, let's, let's say you approve next week the resolution, they get the special use permit, and somebody calls in and says, it's, it's a noise issue, our officer would have to go out and be able to document that there was actually a noise violation. It wouldn't just be, well, that's one check mark. You know, they have to document it. Same would be true of any if feuding or if I'm, if I'm the doggy daycare and baser and I want to complain about this one because they took some of my business, you can't just make up a random complaint and we, our officer would follow through to make sure that it exists. It's kind of like we had issues in the south end of the county about noise complaints and we went down and were unable to document that there were any noise complaints or actual noise violations. So. That's all I have. And you said noise violations on a conditional use permit. It wasn't just a noise complaint on a regular residence. Right? We've had both. Okay. And we, again, it's not a complaint. Do we, we do not have a noise ordinance in the county for just residents, correct? Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, no, the county does not. Uh, if I could offer this thought, in the past, the county has thought and discussed having noise resolutions. They're probably far more appropriate in urban and municipal environments. Under Kansas common law, if I conduct operations or activities on my property that are so noisy as to become a public nuisance or a nuisance to your property, you have a private remedy against that. Uh, I would suggest the county uh, may only muddy the waters. I'm against any kind of a noise ordinance for that anyways. Like I said, I'd be the first one to violate yep. it. <laughs> it probably wouldn't look good. So. We do get noise complaints. We do get anonymous complaints. I'd like to offer the observation that the anonymous complaints are rarely actually anonymous. Uh, they usually know who it was. Right. Right. Well, like I said, we're an agriculture community and there's gonna be noise and there's gonna be noise especially when you run old tractors and, and cows yeah we have railroad crossings and yeah be cows yeah, yeah, so, yeah let's, yeah. let's let's get on the railroad <laughs> coyotes now. all that noise uh, you know. i like to create that noise <laughs> yeah coyotes yipping <laughs> yeah well, like I said, I think all of the conditional use permits we approved today were all good businesses that the county needs and they're providing a service. Wish we had more. Thank you for all that you Yes, done. Crystal, yeah, thank thanks, you. Crystal. Welcome. Thank you for your time. All right. Uh, we got any updates going on? Uh, anything the commissioner? New mayor in Tonganoxie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I went to the city council and saw them sworn in and the new city council and, and Rock is leaving the room now. Thank you, Mr. We'll see you. Bye, Rock. But uh, yeah, it was, it was good. And then we had the Republican town hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was at that. I went to uh, VFW on New Year's Day at Tongan Oxy. They have their breakfast. Big turnout there. Uh, it was Tongan Oxy Post. Uh, went to Willie Dove's town hall in Baser on Saturday and at the Baser Library. John was there. And let's see what else. Town Hall Monday night. And I'll be at Baser tonight, and the fire board meeting is canceled yes, tonight. Yes, it's canceled. Or postponed, Post I It's say. postponed. It's postponed. But when they do have that meeting, uh, either Commissioner Colson or yourself will attend? Yes. Okay. Or it depends, because if Commissioner Shimke's back, he may want to. Oh, okay. well, yeah, just I mean, so somebody goes. Yeah, we will just have so goes. we will have I'd representation sitting probably there. Probably two of us. Two of us will At least be there. two of you go. That, that'd be great. That'd Who, be great. Who's going to the, the, uh, on the base there? I was planning on attending on the base. Is that the evening? It's that four tomorrow morning. Isn't there, isn't there something tomorrow morning? No, tomorrow's the government affairs meeting for the oh, Chamber yeah. of Commerce. Yeah, and that's, that's about. Commissioner Culbertson and I were planning on okay. yeah. attending uh, that. Mm -hmm. But and I, then that's an evening thing you're talking about. Yeah, right? this yeah. is I a mean, four o'clock. I mean, if we put it on our agenda, then more of us can go. Right, right. but if, so, if, as long as two two commissioners go, we I think we got good representation. Right, I'm planning to go to that. Okay, uh, on the, is that the 16th? The fourth one. The one at the fourth is the 16th of January at four o'clock. Yeah, oh, oh, that's a Thursday. Thursday. Late yeah, afternoon. Planning. So I was going to go anyway because okay. my husband will be going. Right. So okay, uh, so me and her are going tomorrow to see the chamber, and then you two go to the fourth. It's a but it's at four, correct? Four o'clock. Yeah. 
and we can work it out next week too. And then me and Chad, Chad will Chad get will to the fire. Back, so. Fire one. We'll see. Yeah, I don't Just know. So we they haven't named a date for the. They haven't given okay. us a date for the. Okay, and then. Uh, then there's the. Um, the invitation we received. Oh, uh, soil conservation. Soil conservation. That's what I was looking for. I printed right. it out, but I don't know and what I to do forgot, it. Yeah, it's on my I, desk. Okay. But we got our RSVP by the 14th. Or who's, who's all going to that? Well, that's, we'll figure it out. You want to go? Jeff wants to go. What, what day is it again? That's, I can't yeah, remember. It's February 1st. It's Febu yeah, it's in February. So. February 1st, Commissioner. That's it. First. February 1st? Yes. Oh, I, I oh okay. Have, There's so much stuff to go through. I have something else to go There's so much stuff. Yeah. We don't want to get too far out. Yeah, yeah. I plan on going to that. We don't want to get too far. We'll get confused. It's um, not in Oski, though. It's in Lansing. It's Lansing right? at the community right. center. Yeah. Right. I mean, I can go. I don't have a problem um, with that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to okay. go. Okay, good. And, uh, and you went to? City. I went to Easton City Council meeting. Uh, the new mayor started. Um, we got some projects we're working on there, some FEMA lots and solar panels and a new sign, uh, stop signs and a city welcome sign and a couple other things. And then went last night, a uh, work session. Uh, that was on building codes and fire codes. And uh, No more burning in the city. No more burning in the city of any kind. No burn barrels, no small campfires. Maybe, Not maybe even without, uh, any, without any permitted codes, because there's been some confusion. They, there has been codes. confusion, and we are not planning on inspecting, going out and inspecting properties in the county for anything, just what? as a general rule. Um, there has been discussion, you know, let's make clear, there has been discussion by the Board of County Commissioners to look at the possibility and study the potential for minimal safety codes for residential new construction and and included in that has nothing new construction no on homes or homes, chicken house on homes residential not chicken house not chicken houses okay. not barns not outbuildings <laughs> <Because> <laughs> this would not be backdated this would be for right new, new, construction. new construction and we are not having any plans of sending out people to go and unilaterally inspect people's property and their homes to see if they have any dangerous conditions that's up to them to determine and we're I mean, not going to create a new bureaucracy no, no, new, no new bureaucracy no new board no we're just not looking. that i'm aware of and so yeah, this I, is just a clarification for social media there's been some misinformation on social oh absolutely media. and uh do we have a work do we have a work session very set up important that, for the, that people and know I, that we're, we're not, not that doing that and i know that although people think if it's on the facebook or on the internet it it's must be true. true this one isn't this is not true. We don't have a work session set up no, on building the last, codes. The last action that the board took was to form a committee, no which was approved, happens. and then that committee has to meet and review it to see what they might recommend. And so that hasn't until happened. Until that yet. happens, there wouldn't be anything coming right. back to the so board. They so they're not hiding meetings. They have so not we met. haven't approved a committee yet. No, yeah. you approved the, the committee. They, approved the committee. The committee. they have not met yet. And the committee's meeting for what reason? To review to see if there's the feasibility of implementing building codes. And what the feasibility of implementing building codes for yes. residential for re residential for new well, construction for new construction. For new construction without inspection without inspection without inspection which would establish liability if you convey a property then the liability would would go on the property owner but the committee has not met yet where well, they're scheduling it now once they meet and come up with a recommendation to bring back then it'll come to a work session for you all. Okay, yeah. so we're waiting on the committee. But to I don't come know up who with. decided that we were going out and inspecting people's properties, but that is just not true and Well, you no, know, it is because the appraisers do. Well, the appraisers, <laughs> but that is not the Board of County Commissioners. I know. I know but we don't and in Johnson have County, any desire to have I mean, anyone. there's there's different levels of building codes and in Johnson County, maybe they do implement it like that, but this is not Johnson County. Right. The, my thought is is what we'll ultimately end up with would be we say hey we your house needs to be built to uh, what a 2012 standard or whatever and the builder will sign that says yeah I'm building it to that anyway and the, and most of them do anyway and people need to remember that they're, but they're we're not, not going to send a guy out there to inspect it and say oh well, I'm a week behind right so, 
halt construct halt the construction until I get we're not yeah that's ridiculous I don't see and that, that ever happen. no that's never going to happen and I think people need to remember or realize that that part of this came to a head because of the the, the tornado right. damage and because of the fact that there were no codes in existence in the county we had people trying to rebuild their homes or or fix their homes and could not get full compensation from the insurance, insurance companies company. to do that because the county had no codes. So, so your I idea on this would be just on houses, not barns? No barns. And what about room additions? New, well, uh, new that's room additions? Have to be brought forward from yeah, the that's, that, ha that hasn't even yeah, I'm just trying to get gotten your that far. Idea can, of but but the, the basic point is that we're not going to be hiring a bureaucracy of people, at least from my point of view. No. Yeah, no. The, you know, I mean, it's there's little things like floor joists, you know, how they're spaced. And if you cut corners on that, you increase the danger to our first responders, our firefighters, you know. There's, and I think that Chuck McGaha expressed that as a concern at one point in time because there's a say, you know, if there is a fire in a structure, entering that structure can become precarious if a, if a building, a home has not been properly designed and built. I just think we need to stay on top of this because bad yeah. information can really spread. And but no, you know that's why our spreads. meetings are live, though. Yeah. So you can get the facts if you really want to. So. And we're not. We're yeah. We're not trying to no. sneak around and do anything. We we just want people to be but safe. Like. Uh, you know, the last time we had this discussion, I mean, it was. No. I mean, nobody supported it on the board as far as uh, like you said a barn or anything like <laughs> no. that anything agriculture anything is like I said there's just nobody wants their hat to purchase a home that's been wired with extension cords and plumb with garden hose either. right and that's exactly. I think that's the only thing it's, you're going to sign a deal that says you're building it to code I've talked to a couple builders and they that are big they big builders that. and they've said you know, we don't mind complying with this at all because it just reinforces the fact that we do quality work. Exactly. And can't be undercut by somebody else. Right. So it's no. coming in, cutting mm -hmm. corners so that they can give a better price on building a home. But like I said, I know this board does not approve growing government to where we have five inspectors no. on one house. Uh, so That's not, they can, people can live in the city. Rest at ease there. Them. So, Enough said, I guess. Enough said on Thanks, that. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else that anybody's got going on uh, that's coming up? Meetings going to? Uh, I think I covered right. it. I've sent the information to mid American Regional Council on uh, the uh, positions. Did the uh, letter and get? And they'll be emailing you folks. Uh, me switching with Vicki on the workforce yes. and then yeah. me getting switch. on to Mark committees. Right. They'll be yeah. emailing you. Okay. And with that being said, uh, work schedule or work sessions <clears throat> be uh, road and bridge next week. Yeah, next week uh, we're planning on road and bridge coming in. Um, they're going to be discussing, uh, I think, the um, dust abatement project, the fees, process fees. Okay. okay. Um, and just to, because the question came up also, <clears throat> social media. We're still on schedule for Millwood Bridge to be open in August, correct? I mean, just for you, End Jeff. of July. Bridge E58 right. is on schedule. E50 is on schedule. So. Bridge. In, end of July. I'm just saying, I'm just putting uh, that out there. That it is on schedule no, to begin construction this spring to be completed by August. The goal First. is that <laughs> I think the realistic goal no. is before school starts. Before school starts. Right. right. So I'm sure people will be really happy. Or the primary them. election. <laughs> yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. <laughs> um, well, your position is no, but <clears throat> I'm sure it'll help. Yeah. No, it's a it's a big inconvenience. I mean, everybody understands that. Uh, so we got Road and Bridge, and we got Mid America Regional Council wants one, KDOT wants one, and Fairmount Township. So that's got us. We have new actually. Couple, we could do two at two of them and. Probably because some of them are. And can we well. put on the agenda or something to discuss the request from the cities? Yeah, we need to do that too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll 
Okay. Well, we're into what February now. Hang on with what I just listed, because next week's we middle of the month already. already. Yeah, we just need to add that, add that to one to one of the other ones. Today's the 8th. What's today? Right. Is today a holiday or something? Elvis's birthday or something? That's January 10th. Oh, okay. I was close. <laughs> All right. No, I just think that we need to add that to uh, another work session right. or something. We need to move forward uh, for, with that request. Yes. And like I said, I know some of you just got it today. So, right. That's why I said just uh, to. We need some time to digest that. I will be out of town on the 22nd half. After the meeting, after I, I won't be able to attend the work session on the twenty second. If we have one before noon, if we, I have, if, I have to be. No, I have a meeting. I have to go. To he the wants school. to buzz right on out of here okay. right about yeah. the, about All now. Right. Well, we'll, we'll, all right. Okay. All right. If we don't have any other updates, then I'll entertain a motion for the executive session. I move that this board recess from open session and go into a closed executive session to discuss security measures as justified by KSA 754319B13 and that this board resume open session in this meeting room at 15 minutes. Uh, 10.45 a.m. Present in the executive session will be Commissioners Culberson, Vicki Cos, Doug Smith, Chad Shim no, Chad Shimke will be by phone. Uh, Chad by phone. Will be by phone. And Mike Steven, County Treasurer Janice Van Paris, Deputy, uh, Deputy County Treasurer Jennifer Schermbeck, County Administrator Mark Lothry, and Senior County Counselor David Van Paris. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 We're going to return to regular session. Uh, we're returning from the executive session. Uh, no action taken, no decisions made. <coughs> the topic was limited to the discussion of security. <clears throat> okay, I'll entertain a motion to enter into executive session to discuss property acquisition. I move that this board recess from open session and go into closed executive session for the preliminary discussion on the acquisition of real property as justified by KSA 75-4319B6 and that this board resume open session in the meeting room at... I'm going to need 45 minutes. Need 45 minutes? Yes. 11.30. So if you went until 11 o'clock, that should be fine, right? Yeah. 11 or 12 o'clock, excuse me. You want 12 o'clock? You want 45 minutes or you want an hour? Oh, we're looking at 12. No, no. 11.30 yeah. is fine? 11.30 a.m. Yes. Okay. Uh, president of the executive session will be Commissioners Jeff Culberson, Vicki Cos, Doug Smith, Mike Steven, uh, Chad Shemsky by phone. Yes. Uh, Administrator Mark Lawfrey and Senior County Counselor Dave Van Paris. Second. Is okay. that... Is, uh, is everybody... Evan, Mr. Evans? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Okay, it's 1130. Uh, we are returning from executive session. Or do we need to wait on Jeff? You can do I'll, I'll just let it go. Okay. All right. Uh, the topic was uh, limited to uh, property acquisition. Uh, no final decisions were made, and the direct staff to continue as directed. As discussed, I'm sorry, now as directed. There was no, we just keep The staff to on. continue as discussed. No final decisions were made. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. Okay, do we have any other business for this board? Then a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Everybody. <laughs>